What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create an increment counter that counts up and down. So it's a very simple project that will help you understand a bit more about how JavaScript works. And as you can see, it also logs in the console down below everything that we're doing up here. So if we go up, you'll see the number rise down here. Or if we decrement the number, you'll see that the number will also decrement in the console. So let's get started immediately by opening a new folder and creating our index.html as always. So index.html. And in future videos, I'm just going to be explaining the HTML rather than creating it each time. But for these simple examples, I think it's fine just to recreate it. So you get an idea on how the projects usually get created. And of course, the first thing we want to do is create a link that is CSS. And that will link to style.css. Just leave it as that. And down below, before we forget, we're going to create a script with the source, which is going to be called events.js. And that will link to our JavaScript file as always. And inside the body, we're going to create an h1 with the ID of header dash number and that's going to be set initially to zero and then below we're going to create a div because we're just going to add a few buttons in here and that's a good way to create a wrapper so button and that's going to be of type button and all we want to do is provide an on click which will be called increment with the parentheses do not forget the parentheses and then we just have to add this plus as the text then we're just going to copy and paste that right below. And the only difference here is that we're going to call this function decrement. And we're going to provide a minus here. So that will be the UI for our app. And let's actually save it and open a live server so we can see our changes over here. So at the moment, it should look like this. You will have two buttons that don't do anything and a header that is set to zero. So now we can go ahead and create a style.css. And inside here, we just want to make sure that everything aligns to the center. So it will be fairly easy. We're just going to refer to the body. And inside here, we're going to call display and we're going to use flex. And in case you're wondering what flex is, I've made a tutorial about that on my channel. So go ahead and check that out if you're curious. Otherwise, just copy this and everything will be centered perfectly. So we're just going to call justify content and we're going to center it. Then we need to align the items and center those as well. And finally, we need to set the flex direction to column. So everything goes from up to down. Then when we click on save, you'll notice that all of the elements will be centered. And also before I forget, I should go ahead and analyze the element and open the console so we can see what's happening down here. And now the next thing to do, as you can see right now, we have an error that says it cannot find the events.js. That's because we have not created that yet, of course. And we're just gonna go ahead and type in events.js. Now you will have no more error in the console, which is great. And we can finally get started with writing some more JavaScript code. So in this tutorial, the first thing we need to cover is that you can create variables and variables can be numbers, they can be text, they can be decimals. And the easiest way to declare a variable is to type in var, number, or whatever name you want and assign it the variable you want. In other languages such as Java, you need to declare what type it is usually before assigning it. So, I mean, this is a this is what they call an integer. So usually you'd have to do var int, but in JavaScript and other languages like Python, this is automatic. The program infers it without any problem. So, I mean, right now it knows that this is an int because we have an integer right here. So we're very lucky to have that in JavaScript. It's very easy and we don't need to explicitly define the types but I will go over the basic data types in a different video. For now, you just need to know there are numbers, there are strings and so on. And I'll add a semicolon. And I also want you to note that in JavaScript, this is completely optional. You do not need to add semicolons to statements because it provides it automatically once you compile the project or once you run the script, it automatically inserts them. So you don't have to do it, but there are certain exceptions that it makes sense to add the semicolon to make the code more readable and sometimes you'll get errors that can be prevented by the semicolon but i'll go over those in a different video for now you just need to not worry about using semicolons for the most part of it because they are only used to separate statements so i mean adding a semicolon there can allow us to create two variables essentially on the same line so let's say variable number and variable apple right so we defined both of those on the same line they're just used as separators. 
Now if we go ahead and type in console.log and we log number plus apple, you'll notice that these two will be added together and we'll end up with the value of two. As you can see down in the console over here, we have a two as the output to the console. So that's essentially what you can use semicolons for. They just separate statements. And sometimes, I mean, if you remove it and accidentally put two statements on the same line, it will not accept that. And it might actually lead to problems in your code because it also might accept it. And that's where the big problem comes in, that you won't be able to spot it immediately because it will accept the program, but it won't give you the output you're looking for. So sometimes semicolons can be used to prevent that. And then we're gonna go ahead and create another variable, which is going to be a string. And a string is just essentially text in a programming language. So if we go ahead and just type in a pair of quotation marks, it will define it as a string. And all we will write inside here is the script has loaded. I will click on save. Now down below, we're going to go ahead and call console.log and we're just going to log the string. So if we click on save, you'll notice that it will load the script and once it gets to this statement over here, it will say the script has been loaded. And what you need to know about these scripting languages is that each line of code gets executed one at a time, which means this will happen first and then this and then this. So everything happens in order until we get to the point of asynchronous code execution, of course, but that will be covered in a later video. For now, you just need to know that everything happens in order, so it's important you do things in order. For example, pretend you created this string variable, right? You can't just go ahead and refer to it above that because this will try to execute a line of code that hasn't been created yet. It will start with this, and then it will create it down here. So when you click on save, you'll see that the output will be undefined because we have not defined what the string is yet and that's why it doesn't give us an output. So everything has to be in logical order in order for JavaScript to execute it efficiently. So for now, all we have is the script is loaded, but now let's actually go ahead and create the logic that will allow us to increment and decrement this onClick button. So the first thing we have to do is type in function because it's much easier to create blocks of code and that's essentially all that functions are. And a very quick way to increment the number is to type in plus plus number. And I mean, that's, the equivalent to typing number equals number plus one. Then we want to refer to our document header number so we can change it. So document get element by ID and I named it header number. Then we need to call the inner HTML so we can change that. And that's just going to be equal to the number. Then we're just gonna type in console.log and we need to log the number. And right now I'm just creating a string inside the console log with a space plus the number. So what this will do will create a string and it will add this to the string because in JavaScript, you can just add numbers to strings and they will add or become a string. So now if we click on save and we click on plus, you'll notice that the number will increment, but of course we didn't write any code for it to decrement. So nothing will happen when we do that, but that is very easy to fix. So all we have to do is just copy and paste that and change this function to decrement. And here, instead of plus plus, we can just type in minus minus. We click on save. Now the number goes down and up. So it was very simple to do that. One thing I recommend is that you never copy and paste the code. So something more efficient than this would be to create a function that says change number, right? And here we can go ahead and copy that and paste it inside here. Then we can go ahead and type in change number and change number. Now, when we click on plus and minus, it will execute the same code, except this time we only had to rewrite it once. And of course there are even more efficient ways to do this, but what you need to concentrate on when you write code in general is to make it as reusable as possible. This just makes it so we can use it as many times as we need without having to rewrite these lines of code and it makes it a lot easier to edit in the long run. So in case we want to change this number text to something else, we don't have to do it twice. And the final thing I want to show you in this video, of course, is how to comment, because there will be times that you need to comment code out just to test other features. And the easiest way to comment something is just to add two slashes and then write your comment, such as this is documentation. 
And depending on your computer, you can use a shortcut and it's that easy to comment things out, of course. But they also have another one that's called a block comment. And to create a block comment, all you have to do is create a slash, an asterisk, and to close it, another asterisk and a slash. So inside here, you can write whatever text you want on as many lines as you want. And usually if you just go over something like that, click on edit, you can toggle a block comment by using this combination. And block comments are what you would usually use for bigger functions. So if you don't like any of this code, let's pretend you just find your shortcut and you create a block comment. Then the code will execute and it will ignore everything inside the comments. So as you can see, nothing here is working because I have commented everything out and nothing has been defined. But anyway, I believe I covered everything that I had to in this video. In the next video, we will be going more into depth about how to use operators and what the data types are, and just a little bit more about the introduction to JavaScript. But with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.